Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 17 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. So after the last video, I posed to it to you guys like what you wanted to see next, and you wanted to see the spawn controller, which I don't blame you, it's pretty darn cool. Um, so we've talked about jet fuel, and um, of course one of the main components of jet fuel is blaze powder, which you can be a bit annoying to get a hold of. But with the spawn controller, you could go ahead and build a mob grinder for any mob that has a, a spawner that you can find, and of course you can always find a blaze spawner somewhere in the nether fortress, and get as many as you want. So let's take a look at how to make it because it's actually crafted pretty simply so the spawn controller is crafted with two base panels a circuit board a gold ingot two blocks of obsidian and two blocks of glowstone so of course you have to go to the nether to get the glowstone um, and that gives you the spawner controller which is pretty darn neat um, you can't place it down oh you can place it down in the world but it, it wouldn't do you any good place on the ground like this I didn't know you could do that okay well the spawner controller looks like this but uh, its main purpose is to be placed on top of a uh, mob spawner. So if we take a look, and I've got a zombie spawner here, because they won't spawn during the daytime. Um, and it looks like this when you place it on a spawner. You see that um, these little uh, sort of arms come down over the side of the spawner, and just you know that, that lets you know that it's working. Um, and then, if we hit it with the transducer, we see that it actually gets power in from any side uh, of the mob spawner, but not the bottom. Uh, you can only put it in from the sides, and um, if we take a look, we see that the the mob the spawner controller has no minimum torque or speed. It simply requires 131.072 kilowatts. So that's the output of two gas engines, half the output of a performance engine, a quarter of the output of a maxed out hydrokinetic engine. You know, all you know, all kinds of things you can get that power with. Um, it, it's not very difficult. So, let me remember what that number was. It's exactly 131072. I'm just going to type that in here and give it one newton meter. You obviously don't have to do that, but I'm going to do that because if we take a look. So, we've now given it max, uh, minimum power but at maximum speed, and uh, we can see that the operational time is down to s six seconds, it says. But anyway, we can see that the, the interface has a couple of buttons. It has a button, a place to type a number, and then this red number over here. Um, so what is all this stuff? Well, pressing the disable enable button does exactly what you think it does. As soon as you give this minimum power, you can hit that button and it gives you this sort of effect and now the spawner is disabled and it won't spawn anything. If we look inside, we can kind of see that the rotating zombie is no longer rotating. He's just sort of stuttering in place. The spawn controller is preventing the spawner from working. All right, and that'll, you can do that infinitely as long as it has power. You can see it says infinity. Now when we go back to enable mode, there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. First of all, this number over here. Um, in order to get this to work, you got to put in a minimum spawn delay. But you'll notice that when it says zero right now, this number here is in red. And if I type any number less than this red number, it doesn't want to work. That is the minimum delay. See, as soon as I turn it to 120, it goes black. And now, if it wasn't daytime, so the zombies could actually spawn, is this zombie going to spawn? I don't know. It hasn't spawned a zombie in the daytime for me yet, anyway. Um, it'll actually work. The number over here changes depending on the power input that you're giving it. If if we go ahead and uh, let me check what the um, output of this gasoline engine is for torque and speed. 128 and 512. So if we go to 512 and 128, actually we've got to double those. 10, well... It would still be 512. It would this would be doubled to 256 if you had two gas engines. So we've got the same amount of power, but we've got significantly less speed. And you'll notice that now this is at 440. So the spawn controller wants speed. It doesn't have a minimum torque requirement. So whatever power you're putting into it, you're gonna want to gear it to the highest possible speed so you can get the shortest possible delay. Um, unless you don't care about the spawn delay, in which case, you know, it, you can go ahead, it, 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 it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and get this spawn delay down as low as possible. And um, I found that one, zero, zero, you know, one and a half megawatts gets this thing down to zero. Um, it just, the, num the actual number is probably somewhere in f before that or somewhere around there. But this works, 1.5 megawatts. 
Um, I've given it at maximum speed, so it's one and a half mega radian per second. Gets you down to can get you down to zero. And if we go ahead, and you're gonna want to be careful with this thing because if you if you do put that much power into it, you might be able to make so many entities you could lag yourself out. Let's go ahead and set it to midnight, and we'll see that these zombies are gonna spawn really really quickly. So let's set it back to daytime so they all burn up. <laughs> they're all they're all going for the village. Oh no. But you can see that, that that spawned a ridiculous number of zombies in a very short order. Let's just get rid of these guys. Okay. And with the sword, we got all kinds of stuff. So, so that's that's the spawn controller. Um, you do have to find a spawner in the world. Um, you can't craft them. So if you find yourself a zombie dungeon, don't just, or a skeleton dungeon or something, go ahead and put torches around it to stop it. But then once you get your spawn controller, just stick it down, give it some power, and and there you go. So that's one half of an automatic mob grinder that you could build in rotary craft obviously the other half then is some way to kill the mobs that you are spawning and that would be the mob harvester so the mob harvester is crafted ridiculously easily with a heater an ender pearl and four base panels we already learned how to make the heater but just for your reference it's this kind of thing here So that will give you this mob harvester block which looks like this it's got this orange area above it and that's the damage area any mobs that enter this area while the machine is has power will get burned up and killed um, it is pretty cool and you have to put power into any of the sides or um, the bottom see let me just get down here just so you can be yep you can put the power in the bottom and um, it will just it will kill the mobs as if a player killed it okay and what that means uh, for uh, for you in your mob grinder is that the mobs will will drop items that they only drop when players kill them and they will also drop experience so it's really really good um, it's a really good way to, 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 to kill the mobs because you will also get experience from this um, so so yeah it's pretty straightforward you just gotta give it power uh, it takes um, 16 384 kilowatts which is the output of just a simple um, steam engine Let's just give it the coil. Well, let's just put. I always like to put a dyno down just so that you guys can see that. Yeah, that's the power I'm giving it. <laughs> so, what's the steam engine. What's the numbers on that? Thirty-two and five twelve. And thirty-two. If we whack this, we see that power is being received. And if I go ahead and grab a spawn egg Ooh. oops what can we spawn um well I'll spawn a spider that should work see that he just got killed you see it kind of like a laser beam shoots out of the thing let's do that again and he just dies and he drops the experience so you can pick the experience up so how do we automate this? Well, you could probably, if you think back to some of the machines that we've been using, you can probably think of, of what we're doing here. I've already set up a basic, a, a pretty crude one, I, I gotta be honest. I've set up a pretty crude uh, mob grinder over in this tunnel here. Uh, I got myself a blaze spawner just to um, illustrate it, but you could easily build something like this uh, in the nether around a blaze spawner. So I've got my blaze spawner back in there. I just put this glass here. You can see what I got set up. I've got some. Um, I got three. Uh, I've got three uh, mob harvesters down here. They're all just powered with uh, coils that are, that are just um, sitting around in there. But you can, you know, power them however you want. Um, I've got my mob spawner set up up here. I've got a coil to power it, and then I've got a coil powering an item vacuum. Because remember, the item vacuum can suck up experience. I've already been, I've run this for a while to test it. The item vacuum can suck up the experience that the mobs are, are dropping, which makes these uh, the, the item vacuum just a perfect perfect uh, pairing with with these uh, these mob grinders so I'd highly recommend using it so I've got my um, spawn controller set uh, I'm not giving it any power right now but I'm giving it the 1.5 um, megawatts at pure speed that that'll give me uh, the super fast spawn rate and if we just turn this on 
the blazes will start spawning. Now, <laughs> he's shooting at me. The blazes aren't going to, and he's not going to die because he's actually too high up now. i got to go ahead and put that block back. So the blazes, you'll notice, they're not spawning as quickly as the zombies did outside, but that's because there's not as much empty space around this mob spawner, but that's fine because they're still spawning very quickly, getting killed by the grinders. You can see the laser beams shooting up. And even though they're slightly above the lasers, they're still going to get burned to death. I think that's because the laser beams stop the, the, when they impact a uh, visually stop when they impact the mob. That's a pretty cool effect, actually. I like the lasers. And you see that they are producing blaze rods and giving XP into this item vacuum. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so uh, you can use this uh, sort of a system with anything. This, would, this system would fit really well in a zombie dungeon, um, skeleton dungeon, any, anything. It would fit very well anywhere, pretty much. Anywhere you find a spawner. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it actually for um, the spawn controller. Just remember how just remember how this works. Just remember that whatever the red number is over here, that's the minimum number you can put in the spawn delay. All right, and that's I think that's in seconds. So remember, if it's not working, you make sure that this number over here is not red. Otherwise, because you know, otherwise you got to give it more power for the number that you want to get. Also remember that the spawn controller didn't want to spawn the zombies out there in the bright light. So the spawners, you know, if they have conditions that need to be uh, respected, they still they still need those. So you can't spawn zombies and skeletons in broad daylight. Um, it does have to be dark, either at nighttime or in a dark cave. And yeah, if you don't want to set up a spawner like this, where you just they're spawning directly onto these things, you could totally use fans to push them around. Or um, even just make a standard dark room mob spawner, like a big tower um, with a dark room on it, and uh, or a big dark room that just and then just use mob harvesters. I mean, these mob harvesters and it can be used for uh, traditional uh, mob grinders that don't require a spawner, or um, they're very very useful. So uh, just uh, go ahead and um, experiment with them in creative or something because they're very nice. They're very good really really good blocks for get, for harvesting resources so anyway yeah that is the um, mob spawner controller and the mob harvester I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed the episode and that you've you now feel confident to make these machines they're very simple to use um, you know don't let the mob spawn controller um, intimidate you if it's not working just remember about the numbers and uh, and and so yeah that's pretty much it so um, next episode I I'm I'm going to talk about the um, solar tower so then we'll have talked about all of the um, power generators so I think it's a good thing to get all this done so uh, next video we're gonna talk about the solar tower it's pretty powerful but you know it, it, it's a big setup so uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed this um, I'm see you next video I'm Sentinel H and I'm signing out.